Wire strippers are an essential tool when you're tackling DIY electrical projects at home. But many DIYers make mistakes using wire strippers that make their project take longer or, as we'll see in mistake number three, actually could cause serious problems down the road. In this video, I want to show you those common mistakes so you can get your electrical projects done faster and safer. Mistake number one is stripping too much or too little insulation from the wire. If you strip too much wire, you'll have bare wire that could touch your finger, a metal box, or another wire. If you strip too little wire, you won't have a good connection because the insulation will prevent the wire from connecting with the terminal screw or plate. Now, devices such as outlets or switches have markings on the back to show you how much insulation to strip. Connectors like WAGO connectors also show you how much insulation to strip. And if you're using a wire nut, the package will list how much insulation to strip from the wires. Mistake number two is not twisting the wire stripper after you cut the insulation. Many DIYers start by just putting the wire stripper around, closing it and trying to pull it off. Now that way may work sometimes, but often it doesn't like it doesn't here. Why? Because the cutters didn't cut all the insulation all the way around. So best practice is to close the cutters and then quarter turn each way and then the insulation comes off easily. Mistake number three is using the wrong gauge cutter for the wire that you're stripping. If you use a cutter that is smaller than the wire inside, it will cut into the wire and compromise it. In North America, typically white Romex is 14 gauge wire and yellow Romex is 12 gauge wire, but check the labeling on the outside of the sheath to confirm. Make sure you line up the wire with the correct cutter slot. If your cutters have markings for solid and stranded wire, like my Milwaukee 6-in-1 electrician's pliers do, make sure you use the solid wire markings. Mistake number four is not using the J-hook holes that are on the wire stripper. Many DIYers don't use these holes in the wire stripper because they're not sure what they're for. What they're actually for is to allow you to create a J-hook quickly and easily. You don't have to reach for needle nose pliers to create those J-hooks. Just take the wire, put it through the hole, and then take the wire stripper and turn it around. Now you have a J-hook to fit under a terminal screw on the device that you're wiring. Mistake number five is using the small cutters to try to cut the entire Romex wire. These wire strippers do have a blade here at the base. But you'll notice it's not very big. And if you were to try to cut the entire piece of Romex, it won't actually cut through. You could cut through part of it, then you have to go to the other side, cut, and now you've got a jagged cut. So don't use these wire strippers to cut Romex unless you have these larger ones. This is my Milwaukee six in one electrician's pliers. And you notice its cutter is much bigger and can easily cut the Romex and now it's a clean cut. Mistake number six is not using the pliers at the nose of the wire stripper. At the nose end of the wire strippers are these plier-like grips. And you can use these in a number of ways. One is you could make a J-hook slightly tighter if you need to. Just grip the wire there and close that J-hook so it goes better around the screw terminal. You can also use them, one of the good uses is if you have stripped some insulation, let's say I'm going to strip some insulation here and I need to pull this insulation off. Maybe it's not coming off because the wire is a little uh, bent. I can just grab the insulation with the end of the wire stripper here and it gives me enough leverage to pull it off. That's how you can make the best use of the wire strippers on your DIY electrical projects. I'll link to the tools I recommend in the description below. Now, if you're going to be wiring an outlet or a switch into a metal electrical box, watch this video to make sure that you don't make any of the five common mistakes DIYers make when using metal electrical boxes. Thanks for watching.